everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a macrame cushion. So here's everything that you'll need to get started and this is a really great project. I think it makes a really lovely pillow in the end as well and the tassels are of course optional. You could leave them out which I think would look pretty. We need one cushion cover, mine is 50 centimetres by 30 centimetres. I'll have it linked in the description box for you as well. You'll need a cushion insert as well to go into that, so I'll leave this linked in the description box as well, the one that I bought. And you're going to need a wooden dowel, so this is just temporary to hang the cords on, we remove this at the end, but mine is 55 centimetres long. You'll need 32 lots of 240cm lengths of 5mm cord. Here I'm using some single twist 5mm cord. 2 lots of 50cm lengths of 5mm cord. You need a tape measure. Some scissors. Fabric glue or a needle and thread would work as well. This is to attach it to the cushion cover. I think a needle and thread would probably be more secure than this one, but this was all I had, so I'm going to use that. 20 lots of 25 centimetres of 5mm cord. This is optional to create the four chunky tassels. Of course, if you didn't want to do tassels, just leave this out. And Macrame Wire Brush, this is a bamboo one that I sell on my website and Etsy shop. They're back in stock now as well, so you can shop them below. But this is, again, for the tassels and for the fringe at the end, just to brush it all out and make it fluffy. So we're going to attach all of our 32 cords to the dowel using a lark's head knot. So take one cord, split it in half like this. Take the midway point over your dowel. And then pass the two cords through the loop there. And then just pull that to the top to tighten it and that is a lark's head knot. So go ahead and repeat that with all the other cords until you have all of them attached to your dowel just like this. Perfect, so now that they're all attached, we're going to grab one of our 50 centimeter lengths of cord and we're going to create a line of double clove hitch knots. So I'm taking my first cord here on the left and I'm putting it behind the 50 centimeter length of cord and I'm going to bring it up and over like this. And then from behind, I'm going to pass it through that little loop that we've just created there. So this first knot is always tricky to get on, but once you've got the first knot on, it is much easier to create the knots. And then we're going to repeat the exact same step. So I'm going to bring the cord up and over behind pass it through the loop just like that and then I'm going to just pull and tighten that to the top so it sits right below the lark's head knot just like that and then I'm going to leave about an inch of cord left out on the left and then I'm going to be taking the next cord and I'm going to do the exact same step so up over behind and through the loop making sure to repeat that twice with each cord just like this and then I'm just going to continue going along this whole length of the dowel using all the cords until I have a nice straight line of double clove hitch knots. And now it's time to create the X design. So I'm going to separate the first eight cords out because we're going to be working in groups of eight. I'm taking the first cord and we're going to angle it at a diagonal angle down towards the right. It's up to you how shallow your angle is. And then we're going to create a diagonal line of double clove hitch knots now. So it's the exact same process as before. We're just taking the next cord available, bringing it up over behind and through the loop and repeating it twice with each cord. And just continue doing that until you have used up all of the seven remaining cords in this group. And then we're going to repeat that doing one more line and you just want to make sure that the knots are sitting snug against that first line. And then when you get to the last cord, just repeat it and do one more knot just to secure it all. So that's one little section of the X design done. And now we're going to be taking out the next eight cords and repeating the exact same, apart from we're going to take the last cord, we're going to angle it down towards the left and create a line of double clove hitch knots going towards the left this time. So try and keep the angle of the line the same as the side on the left just so it looks nice and symmetrical and it will meet in the middle. And then just repeat that going the whole length until you hit the last cord in this little group. And then again we're going to take the last cord again, angle it down towards the left and then complete a second row. So now it's time to join the two sides together by using the cords in the middle. 
So do one double clove hitch knot going down towards the right, trying to keep that line as straight as you can. Just like this, and then we're gonna just continue on going down the whole length until you hit the last chord in this big group now. And now count in eight chords from the right. Take that first chord from the eight and create a second row just like this. And then we're gonna be taking these eight chords on the left, take the eighth one, angle it towards the left and complete one line. And then again, just take the last chord from this group of eight chords and complete the second row the exact same way as we've done before. And then this will be the finishing row for this X shape. Perfect, so that's that. That's one X complete. So just continue those exact steps that we've just done to create four X's in a row like this. And they should all look fairly uniform in shape and size. And now we're just going to repeat the exact same steps below to create a second row of X's. So I'm just starting on the first line of the X's now and creating that second row just like this. So it's just the exact same steps and you'll be left with this diamond shape in the middle which is where we will attach the tassels if you are going to do that. So just carry on doing this. It might seem quite tedious but as usual I just had Netflix on in the background. And if you have any Netflix recommendations, leave them in the comments below as well because I'm always up for watching something new because I feel like I have exhausted everything on Netflix. <laughs> but if you have any good suggestions, please leave them below. So just like this, we have the two rows of X's done and now we're going to repeat the, the first line of double clove hitch knots on the bottom with our last 50 centimeter length of cord, just like this. So again, I'm just starting it the exact same way we've done before. This will just create a nice finish to the pillowcase and it's also where we're going to be putting the glue on the back to attach it to the pillowcase and if you're sewing this on as well you reduce this line to sew on from the back. So again just continue doing this going the whole length along the cushion until you hit that very last cord. And now we can just go ahead and trim off the excess cords. So I'm just trimming off the last little cord from the 50 centimeter to try and make it even on both sides. And now I'm just going to trim off the bulky length from the bottom of the cushion. So I'm going to leave about a five to six centimeter fringe there. You won't have as much leftover cord from this because I shortened the length. I cut way too much, but I didn't really know how much to cut. So you won't have as much as this, but of course I'm just gonna put this in my scrap cord pile and use it for other projects. So just go along and cut off all the cords and now it's time to attach the tassels if you wanted. So go ahead and grab the 20 lots of 25cm cord and the wire brush and we're going to brush them all out to make them nice and fluffy. So each tassel will have 5 lots of cord in it so I'm just going to go ahead and brush this all out on my desk because it's a lot easier. So I'm just going to pick out 5 cords and work on the 5 cords in one group at a time. So just like this, I'm pinching the middle of the cord and then I'm going to take my brush and just slowly start from the bottom of the cord and work my way to the middle. You can see how nice and fluffy it goes as well and it's so quick to brush out this brush, it really does work wonders. Just like that, so it's all smooth and fluffy and you can see how much fluff just came out then and it looks really soft as well. So just repeat that with the leftover cords, creating four groups of five cords. And now it's time to attach the tassels. So I'm taking one of the groups of cord, we're going to go into one of those diamond shapes. And I'm counting in three cords on the left from the middle. And we're just going to pull the tassel through like that. So it goes round and then it will come through the middle at the bottom like this. And then again I'm counting three cords on the right, pushing the tassel through. And then we're going to pull the tassel from behind through that middle point just like this so it's a bit confusing to talk you through it but hopefully the video helps you out a lot just like that and then you can go ahead and smooth out the tassel and if you wanted to give it a nice brush just hold down that middle point so it doesn't pull it out and then i'm just going to take my time brush it out and then give it a quick trim so I trimmed mine to about four centimeters length. So it's looking nice and chunky and fluffy. And then I'm gonna give it one last final brush before I move on to adding the other three tassels in. 
So now go ahead and grab the other three groups and add them in the exact same way until you have four nice chunky tassels on your pillow. Just like this, everything is done now so we can slide the dowel out. So to do that, I just find it easier to hold on to the dowel with my right hand and then gently push and move all of the cords along until they slip off the dowel. Just like that and that is perfect. So now we can go ahead and grab our cushion cover and our fabric glue or needle and thread if you're using that. The actual macrame pillow part and I'm going to go ahead to my desk again and show you how to attach it. So I've got the insert in now but I actually need to take that out. I was just seeing how it would look. And then these loops at the top from where it was attached to the dowel, you can just unravel them slightly because we're going to be trimming them anyway. So I'm just going to make sure that there's a nice even amount on either side to cover up the cushion as much as I can. So I've taken the insert out now and I'm just going to put some paper inside of the cushion so the glue doesn't seep through. You could also use cardboard but if you're using needle and thread this isn't necessary. I'm going to grab my fabric glue and again if you're using needle and thread it would probably be better but that's all I had. So now I'm going to grab my cushion. I'm going to flip it over to the back just like this and then that first line of double clove hitch knots that we've done, the straight line here is where I'm going to be attaching my glue. So I'm just going to squeeze out a nice beaded line across the whole length of that double clove hitch knot row. Just like this. And then I'm going to flip the cushion over and glue it down, making sure that I glue it in the position where there's an equal amount on the top and the bottom of the cushion so the fringe can cover it. So I'm just doing my best like this and then I'm going to push it down. And we're going to weigh it down soon anyway as well just to help it dry in position. I'm going to repeat the exact same with the bottom row of double clove hitch knots that we've done. So I'm just flipping that up. I'm going to attach a line of glue. and flip it over and then push it down. Just making sure everything looks nice and neat and then I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the boxes that I use for my orders just to help weigh it all down because that was the only thing I could find really and then we're going to come back once it's dry. Perfect, now it's all lovely and dry and I'm going to go ahead and trim the bottom so it's a bit neater looking once I brush it all out. So I'm going to trim them all and I left about a centimetre below the cushion cover so just like that it's all trimmed and looking a bit neater now and then I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same with the top of the pillow, snip off all of those loops, create it so it's about the same length as the bottom fringe. The last thing we need to do to finish this pillowcase is optional again but I'm just going to brush out both the top and the bottom fringe to match the tassels and I think it looked nice as well because it will cover a bit more of the cushion cover below. I'm just taking my wire brush and I'm going to go ahead and brush that all out. Now it's all brushed out and the macrame cushion is finally finished. So now all that's left to do is to unzip the cushion cover, take out that paper, grab our cushion insert and pop that in. Just like so, zip it up and your cushion is complete. Now we can go ahead and put it on our sofa or your bed and enjoy it. I think this would look really lovely on a bed actually. So that is the cushion cover complete. This is my first ever cushion and it came in a pack of two the cushion covers so I'm definitely going to have to make another one to match it. But I hope you enjoyed this and if you do recreate it please be sure to tag me on Instagram at Lunacraft Online because as always I really really love to see your creations. And of course if you make anything macrame you can feel free to tag me on Instagram even if it's not my tutorial. I'd really love to see it and see your work. Feel free to check out any of my other tutorials. I have a lot available now which is really good. And you can shop all of my macrame cord and macrame supplies down below on my Etsy shop or my website. And if you could subscribe, like or comment, that really helped me out. And as always, I really hope you have a lovely week. You deserve it. Bye!